All right, we're excited to be here. Uh, my name is Aaron Frost. This is my friend Dave Geddes, and we're going to talk about the goodness of JavaScript today. So Dave and I, we've been friends for a few years. We worked together at a company called Domo. Dave's actually on the Angular Working Group, which is a cool privilege for him, and I'm happy to call him my friend. So uh, this is Aaron Frost. Uh, we've worked together for a few years now. Uh, great friend. He does the, helps out with the JS Jabber podcast. Who listens to that? Anybody? It's fun. OK. Yeah. Uh, he's got three kids, great guy, love working with him. Only problem with him is he gets us in trouble a lot, like he, uh, Simon just told you about. So he comes over to my desk and he's like, bro, I submitted a, a talk to Fluent for us. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool, what'd you do? And he's like, 1.21 gigawatts. I'm like, I'm what is that? <laughs> and so he's like, oh, don't worry, they won't pick it. Yeah, no, it's they picked stupid. it. They won't pick it. And so he's like, Dave, I need you to figure out a talk for 1.21 gigawatts. Execution guy. So naturally, we build a box and electrocute the crap out of ourselves on stage in front of everybody. For money. No, no money. <laughs> it was fun. So uh, actually, this, this time around, uh, Aaron comes to my desk again. He's like, bro, I submitted a talk to Fluent, a keynote this time. And I'm like, oh, great. What is it now? He's like, Fifty Shades of JavaScript. Yeah. <laughs> so let's bring the lights down. No, no, no. Up in here. So luckily, Peter uh, vetoed that one. And yeah. today we're going to talk about luckily. the goodness of JavaScript. Yeah. That would have got awkward really fast. Super fast. So JavaScript, for a language that was invented in 10 days, it's actually pretty amazing. It's pretty terse. Uh, look at, here's an example. Uh, triple equals in JavaScript. You know what's going on. It's simple, right? Compare this exact same thing to what you would have to write if you're doing Java, right? OK, so for a triple equals in Java, I mean, your, hand, remote, right? your hands are going to be tired by the time you're done writing this thing. Yeah, not very legit. JavaScript also, it's a lot like Scala, where you have multiple paradigms. If you want to do uh, functional programming, if you're old school and you want to do object-oriented programming, um, you can do both, like we're doing here, and kind of tie them together with promises. So there's a lot of flexibility. It's a pretty amazing language. Seems legit, yeah. And then when you're out on the internet, it's great because anywhere where you go, JavaScript, you can learn it like that cool scroll. You go to RDO, you want to see what they do. Um, you just uh, go ahead and inspect it, and you can check out their JavaScript, which is super simple to read, right? Like they put it all in one oh, line yeah. for you, and like they alphabetically order all their variable names. So it's like super simple to, who to learn. Who needs Khan Academy when you have Vue Source, right? Yeah. Um, and this is actually a pro tip. If you want to be really friendly to the new people in our community, make sure you do this little comment down here. Did you see that? JS, yeah. It's kind of like start here. That's what oh, that that's means. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's right. All right, so this, this dumb little language that we all love is getting extremely popular. Um, it's our, the browsers that we have are getting better, faster, stronger. Um, this language, like a virus, has made the jump over to the I server. Not a virus, but okay. This language, like a lovable little parasite, has made the jump worse, but to yeah. the server. We get and it. So now we can write apps in Node in JavaScript. Yeah, and our build, our build tools are now in JavaScript, which is great. And we can build mobile apps in JavaScript, which is super awesome. In iOS 7, they have a JavaScript bridge, and Firefox Mobile is is um, is all in HTML5 and JavaScript. So yeah. Right. Um, now we're starting to see uh, editors even being built in JavaScript. Anybody try out GitHub's new editor, Adam? Am I trying that yet? So that's using a cool project called Node WebKit, which um, bundles um, WebKit and Node into one desktop app so you can build these uh, fully encapsulated desktop apps, which is really cool. Um, that same lovable little virus or a parasite oh, yeah. made the jump to the databases. I don't know. And now, uh, if you're doing a lot of NoSQL, you can actually do MapReduce and write a lot of JavaScript in your database. Postgres is especially interesting. There's this project called PLV8 that embeds the V8 JavaScript engine into Postgres. So you can make functions and call it straight from your SQL, which is amazing. Yeah, I talked to Tim Caswell about JS Git the other day. It's actually coming along really well. He has a T-Edit app in the Chrome Web Store. So you can start using some Git functionality in, in the browser, which is pretty cool. And then Java 8 is being released with um, the ability to import some JavaScript and run inside of a Java container on the JVM using Nashorn, which is kind of an optimized Java runtime for the JVM. So that's coming out next week. It's pretty cool. So it's really, it's everywhere. It's kind of like at the top now. It's, it's everywhere. It's conquered. And um, it's a great language. And like kind of at the pinnacle, looking down, um, 
the, you know, as it climbed the ladder, there was like some collateral damage. We threw a couple people off the ladder and there's like some innocent bystanders along the way, right? So we kind of wanted to recognize them real quick. And like, you know, so one of them was, uh, was math. Math. Yeah. And so like the first rule of JavaScript, right, is don't talk about math, right? So that, that was a problem. The second one, you guys heard about this guy, Jacob, yesterday, Jacob Weary, this actor. Well, actually, um, we did a little digging, and he wanted to be a musician. Budding career. He was, he's actually pretty legit, but we kind of destroyed his career. This isn't a Rickroll. This is actually this Jacob is. Weary. Yeah. Jake Weary. Um, but you know, when like from the 80s, but it's actually pretty recent, so but I think we favored him by doing it. When you're on page 8 of Google search results, like, it's game over, right? Yeah, yeah unfortunately. So the good news is we can finally give Rick Astley a break, because this guy is way better. And anyone who's ever used Java, anyone who's ever used jQuery, stare at the screen right now, because... You use jQuery in your projects? He's shaming you. Let him shame you. Let him have his moment to You did this to us. him. He's, yeah. This is what he's turned into, so... So another one of the casualties is numbers, um, NAND specifically, it's like got an identity crisis. Um, it's not its fault though, like well, its father, Brendan, wasn't around a lot when it was growing up. It's true, that's not good for anyone, you know. And so you talk to him, you say, hey, what are you? Are you a, you're not a number, but what are you? I'm a number, okay, so <laughs> this is a problem, obviously. It's not like um, if we took Pinocchio and we said, bro, you're seriously, you're not a real boy, what type are you though? And the type is real boy, and we're like, dude, you have you have like hinges on your knees on stuff. So, but we have good news on the NAND stuff. Yeah. So actually, in ECMAScript six, we have an opportunity to clean up a lot of these weird um, things that are in the language. Yeah. And so. Um, TC39 got together. They've been debating for months about this, but they finally agreed on what NAND should be, right? New type, really. So actually, starting as soon as this is released in the new browsers, you'll be able to type in type of NAND, and this is what you'll get. It wouldn't be inaccurate to assume that I couldn't exactly not say that it is or isn't almost partially incorrect. So that's actually going to really help with tooling. Yeah, no, I think. It's, it's easier to detect NAND now yeah. on mathematical errors, so that's good. So JavaScript, for, for, for me and for all, a lot of us, it's all about the community. And it's kind of the community that brought us here. We want to take a second and kind of breeze through some of the people who really make JavaScript great for us. Starting with like Resig and Fat, who really kind of get uh, some entry-level people over some initial bumps with their tools. You got Jeremy Ashkenis, who didn't want to wait around for the new version of NAND, so he wrote CoffeeScript. Yeah. You got James Burke came around with uh, Required JS. Yeah, and we got Mishko doing Angular, and we have Ycats doing Ember. These guys have changed the way that you know front-end frameworks look and feel, so that's great. Ryan Dahl with Node, and Isaacs with NPM. And then all the rest of the stuff that didn't exist, TJ Hualachuk wrote, right? Everything else was written by TJ. So. Yeah, which is great. And then we have some guys in the community working on the next version, like Dominic, and he's working on Promises, and Dave Herman among a bunch of stuff, modules. We got a new version of SVG coming out. Object Observe for native data binding in the browser. With Raphael Weinstein. And then uh, Jake is trying to get rid of app cache permanently with service workers. But I actually knew a guy whose cousin got app cache to work once. So I don't know if we need yeah, that, no. really. Yeah. And then web, web components with um, Eric. So we're, we're really excited with the community. And, and we just kind of wanted to recognize some of them. This is just the tip of the iceberg. But yeah. One forgot a lot of names. The thing is, though, this, I mean, it's not about like Angular versus Ember. It's not about the comma JS guys versus the AMD guys. Like, this is one community. This is our community. And um, it's the best community there is. And there's some things that we think we can do as a community to make it even better. There are uh, three steps we think we can follow to make it step better. Step one for a community at next, step one is cut a hole in a box. No. Step one is to be kind. So step one is be kind. Like we have, a, we, sometimes we get troll problems. Everyone needs to be responsible and recognize that when someone creates an open source project and they give it to the world, they're giving it to you whether you're going to use it or not. So um, if you have a problem with it, don't flame them for it because it's really kind of a gift that they're giving to you. Um, and it was meant out of like the, you know, a good spot to help you. Um, and sometimes we get troll issues and, and we all get tendencies to troll. So we kind of build a tool to help um, point out trolls in their evil ways and kind of encourage courtesy in the community. So we built Troll Count. We're going to do a demo real quick. And Troll Count is just a way for people to kind of passive aggressively recognize trolls when, when trolling happens. So we have a friend. 
the best way to solve problems, yeah. really. Um, we have a friend, his name's Merrick, he checks out, but um, we dug deep. He's pretty clean, though. Squeaky clean. So he called Dave out one time for owing him money. I didn't think he was going to make that shot in 100 bucks. He did, though. So, um, so we're going to report him for trolling Dave real quick. So we're going to say we spotted a troll. We're going to paste the link to that tweet. We're going to find it, and then we're going to report a trolling. You're welcome, Merrick. I know yeah. you're watching. Did you click on it? Yes. Demo gods. Demo fail. This is so great. It's showing us right now, actually. <laughs> cool. So cool. Thanks for trolling us live. Anyway, oh, there it is. So he's oh, he got five for that. Him, right? Yeah. So it's how it's supposed to work, right? He's got like an embeddable place now. He can see his troll score. It's deep linked by his Twitter handle. So everyone with a Twitter handle has got a, he's got a profile page on Trollcount. So go check it out. Spot some trolls, and, and then they'll be notified of their, their evil doings. So help encourage courtesy. We think this will solve trolling and racism. Yeah. <laughs> In one. Um, so the other thing is, okay, the next time you find yourself about to troll somebody hard, take all that passion, all that energy, and channel it into a pull request. Yeah. Like, trolling doesn't help anybody unless it's fun, right? Um, but a pull request with passing tests and documentation, that's extremely oh, helpful. IE trolls. Those are fine. Those are fine. Yeah, yeah. Those are totally one cool. One exception. The other thing is, the difference between a mediocre project and an amazing project could be a small, tiny detail, right? Yeah. It could be one guy. It could be one effort. So we want to encourage you to find that thing that you are passionate about. Find that project that you just love. Find that problem that hasn't been solved yet. Jump in, make a difference, and leave your mark. Yeah. And this is the greatest developer community around right now. And we're all here because we love being a part of it. So be kind, be helpful, leave your mark, and remember that the, great, the goodness of JavaScript isn't a language, it's you. Thanks. Thanks. Great.